Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I want to talk about natural plasma balls and low energy nuclear reactions and with specific reference to the fireball phenomena in Hestalen, Norway. Now, ball lightning uh, is something that is extremely difficult to study because it uh, only happens infrequently and rarely does an individual uh, or an area uh, regularly see ball lightning enough uh, for it to be studied with any degree of uh, certainty. And in fact, uh, this kind of property of ball lightning led uh, one George Eagley uh, here to write a uh, do a series of um, studies uh, in the 80s and uh, up to 1990. This is volume two. Uh, volume one is uh, linked at the bottom of this uh, presentation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into uh, four parts, uh, this walkthrough of this uh, blog post, uh, because uh, there's there's a lot to say and it will be too much in one video. So uh, first up, I want to talk about the fact that this aerial light phenomena uh, occurring in this valley called Hestalen in Norway was first re reported uh, in the 1930s. But since the 1980s, there's been a wide uh, observation of balls of light in the sky even on clear days, and actually often on clear days. Uh, um, and uh, below here, I have a, a video that's available on YouTube, uh, cunningly called uh, UFOs over Hestalen, Norway, 2007. And uh, I can't play it because it's someone else's work, but you can play it through the blog post. Uh, and uh, this is just one segment of the video where you've got these three uh, balls of light in the sky. Well, anyway, um, it's so common this phenomena, uh, at, uh, this uh, site, that um, they actually have a whole website dedicated to it called Project Hestalen. So if I go here, uh, this is the website, and they have lots of like pictures from different years and, and projects and maps and, and videos and so forth. So you can check that out uh, in your own time. And uh, essentially, I just wanted to talk here. Firstly, this is a, another video, uh, which you can link to here on YouTube. And there's someone narrating one of their observations, and it says, The last object we saw had the size of a barn. It briefly disappeared, and when it reappeared, it had the shape of a fiery ball. It stopped shining, and soon after, two smaller lights appeared. They crashed into the ground right over there. As it hit the treetops, presumably on the way down, a blue spiralling beam of light emerged. This blue beam hit the treetop over there. After the impact, it changes its spiral movement. So it seems to be a little bit lost in translation, but you can uh, see the guy in the video that I've linked here. And I'm saying here is the result of the two collisions and the resulting spiral movement. The arrow is pointing to the second collision point. So uh, it went dark. A fiery ball appeared in, uh, that then split into t two, and they crashed somewhere over there. Um, one of them like hits this treetop here and then forms this sort of uh, broken uh, spiral movement. Uh, and you see these kind of little M's here. Maybe if I zoom in, and you can go and have a look at the actual video and see. So if I zoom right in as far as I can go here, you can see that it's kind of got these like what does look like a, a helical mo movement going around like this. Uh, but it's kind of broken here, here, with these kind of like apparent offshoots and stuff. And then it kind of hits this other treetop here, according to the description. And then the spiral becomes even more uh, pronounced and discontinuous. Uh, so when I saw this, I, I, I almost could not believe what I was looking at. Because what I'm looking at is something that looks a lot like strange radiation tracks, uh, called SR tracks for short. Uh, which, in my view, and in the view of many uh, researchers in Russia, appear to be a signature uh, of Lena. Uh, so uh, I'll just show you one that's by uh, a Russian researcher, and this one, uh, Irina Savatimova, uh, and this is from 2000. And uh, if you look at this track, um, if I can find it again, <laughs> look at this track here, uh, you can see these kind of broken spiral uh, <clears throat> parts to it. So th this is one example. And um, as I'm saying here, that the, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, different explanations. Uh, and there's this electron-mediated uh, nuclear reactions by this chap called Andrea Carlon. It's talking about some method for uh, a type of shrunken, not really a shrunken hydrogen, but an, a, an enlarged orbit of uh, an electron somehow captures a proton and... and uh, 
uh, something like this, and it has this Zita Buigang uh, uh, procession uh, with the, the proton because it's the heavier mass. Uh, but it's essentially almost like a composite particle that's neutral, uh, although it's not a neutron. And uh, this is his view. But anyway, th the point being here is that if you look uh, down... Uh, 35, 33 to 35, there's a bunch of um, tracks, and these are not his work, these are from other researchers. Um, but you can see here that it, it's got this kind of uh, broken M shape. Uh, again, this is a tighter broken M shape with, you know, it, it, that there is really um, <clears throat> quite similar <clears throat> at first glance uh, to what you're seeing over here, these kind of little M's here. Uh, so these little M's here it looks <laughs> look like it could be the same phenomenon. Now, I am firmly of the belief now that these structures, uh, whatever they are, can be scaled up to any level. So it does not surprise me that this plasma phenomena, which may be related to Lena, is uh, able to exhibit the the same kind of track marks. And um, down here, you've got uh, another one over here. Maybe I can zoom into that. You see this even more broken M. And, and here, you've got these these uh, additionally more broken M marks um, uh, of this kind of spiraling nature. So um, what I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, I, I have suggested that strange radiation is caused by the destabilization or fragmentation uh, of large stable clusters of exotic vacuum objects. Now, uh, it's a very large subject to go into, um, and if you want to review what that is, it's all in this blog post, which is linked to uh, explaining what uh, exotic vacuum objects are uh, to a degree. And I'm saying that uh, they are collectively, both strange radiation and uh, the exotic vacuum objects from which they are formed um, are the active agents, either the thing that's performing the process in Lena. Now, whatever they are, <laughs> they're doing the work in the reactions. And I've directly suggested that they are micro analogs of ball lightning. So, you know, when, when I came across this last week, the fact that this, uh, the only real place in the world where there's very, very regular sightings of uh, fireballs in the sky, um, which certainly sound a bit like ball lightning and seem to have a sign sim signature uh, similar to ball lightning observed elsewhere, then um, uh, and, and having this track, which looks like a strange radiation track, this was not a surprise to me. Um, so essentially, it's from a guy called Ken Kenneth Radford Shoulders, and he discovered exotic vacuum objects. And what he said, actually, and you can see it in, in uh, this uh, one of the links here on exotic vacuum objects, he says, EVOs don't like impedance changes. And so what I'm suggesting here is it's going through the air that has one sort of level of impedance. And when it hits the top of the treetop, it essentially uh, is uh, meeting an impedance change and it basically fragments uh, to a certain degree and gets destabilized and produces this uh, track and then it hits another treetop and it gets further destabilized and, and go ahead and, uh, goes ahead and does this. Now, this isn't the only example in this video of this kind of phenomena happening in Hestalen. Uh, there's one from 1984, which I will look at here. And there we go. So it's almost like it's stabilized and it's sort of come unstable as it's gone on uh, and, and become to a sort of more spiral track. It seems to be spiraling around like this. There's also one from 2013 here. Uh, and if we go in here, you can see these kind of M's. Sorry about the reflection there. Uh, so you can look at the images yourself. So. It's kind of like an M, but it's actually like a, a dot, dot, gap, dot, dot, gap, dot, dot, gap. And you see these same kind of things in that Andrea Carlon paper. So multiple times are we seeing observations of something that comes from what looks like ball lightning and gets disheveled uh, or, or breaks up and forms tracks that look like strange radiation tracks. So this is almost like a very macro version of what I had imagined is going on inside a, a Lena reactor. Uh, when it's emitting this strange radiation. And uh, so when I saw this last week, it was like, wow, uh, really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> and that there's multiple instances and that the, the different looks of them uh, can be found in strange radiation tracks. So uh, in the same uh, video, it reports uh, the spectra of the fireballs shows the presence of scandium. 
Uh, and uh, scandium is a theoretical George Oshawa reaction product. And I discuss the reaction chains in, a, in another blog post here. Perhaps you can see that uh, uh, silicon and nitrogen, uh, which are supposedly both in uh, ball lightning, uh, or available to ball lightning produces scandium or aluminium and oxygen, which uh, the aluminium is formed by carbon and nitrogen, making the aluminium. Aluminium and oxygen is going to scandium. However, uh, we didn't observe scandium when we were doing our um, Nova reactor. Uh, and uh, you can go and see uh, the Nova reactor that I'm talking about there. But uh, it must be noted, however, that scandium can be synthesized. So if I click on this and we go to here, uh, there's a whole range of different ways you can synthesize a scandium. And, uh, and uh, I'm saying that uh, there's nucleon exchange reactions potentially uh, inside an active agent, uh, which could be the ball lightning, that uh, scandium can be synthesized from uh, because there's euxenite and uh, gad gadolonite available uh, in the area uh, in Scandinavia. And also, um, the Hestalen Valley is rich in zinc and uh, copper, and I've given links to uh, nucleon exchange reactions uh, that are um, able to produce those. I'll just show you an, an example for copper here. And so, a whole bunch of uh, reactions here that start off with, say, uh, calcium and copper goes to scandium and nickel, or argon and copper goes to scandium and nickel. So, um, copper could form part of this uh, sort of... Uh, production of scandium process. Um, so using the observations reported from Hastalen, uh, including spectral observations of oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, and scandium, which are in line with those for natural ball lightning, and I will just show you here. It's a study of uh, a ball lightning that was captured by some uh, Chinese. There's a spectrum which you can actually find on Wikipedia, including these uh, oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, and so forth. They've also observed calcium and iron, and uh, the above nucleon exchange reactions, uh, it should be noted that it's really reasonably straightforward to make an educated guess as to the optimum elements to synthesize scandium if Lena is a related phenomena. So that concludes the first part of this video. In the next part of the video, I will talk about a 2002 Italian study of ground and aerial phenomena in Hestalen. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.